Okay, it's recording now. So welcome to the last planned interim of CBOR working group. Um, yes, so you have the etherpad, etherpad, sorry, Carsten, etherpad link uh, that I posted in the chat as well. I see that. My God, is that slow? Yep. And on the agenda, we have working group last call for um, CBORBIS. We have um, the time tag discussion. And um, we can talk about the planning. I mean, we don't have much to talk about yet, but we can um, maybe start giving preferences if we'll need preferences on, on time. If we need to pick a time ourselves. Yes, so, we should, we should um, continue the biweekly rhythm. Uh, mm -hmm. for a while yeah so that as well let's write it down um, not in two weeks to do it no not in two weeks after the well i guess the next meeting will be the official itf meeting virtual meeting and then after that we will restart not necessarily two weeks after that we can talk about the timeline. Is there going to be an official ITF virtual meeting? I'm sorry, that one got past me. I I think so, yes. I Not that it will change much between interim and virtual ITF meeting. It will still be on WebEx. Um, yes. So the, the ISG has said that they want to discuss this some more and then announce uh, they will procedure. give us some more guidance yes yes so that's yeah. why the, the the individual working groups and research groups haven't started scheduling their replacement things yet because we're waiting for isg to tell us how to do that and everybody trying to schedule in april is going to lead to so many collisions yeah. So maybe um, let's wait for that. But we can still uh, in, we can still since we're here today we can still uh, discuss about the preferred time if we need to choose a time so that in case we need to choose a time and it's first come first serve we get a good peak. So uh, my my proposal is to uh, keep this time because it seems to work. Um, So that would be 4 p.m. UTC. I hope we keep this time. I know this is our, I know I kept getting collisions lately, but normally this time I depend uh, for Seabor and try to. Do we want to keep this time or do we want to recognize the daylight savings time shift? Well, I'm assuming when the, EU shifts again, you know, the US and and uh, yes. EU will be adjusted. Yes. Which is soon. Oh, right. So Which, the, today is the only day point. that yeah. today's the only day that it's a bit it's a bit different. Yeah. Right. Because it, it's it, anchored to sixteen hundred. Is it UTC oh, or is it anchored it to it is. It is. It has been. And that's that's why after the EU changes, we will have all changed to an hour later. Do we to that is to 12 p.m. East U.S. Eastern or EU equivalent rather than 11 a.m. Do we really want to do that hour step forward? I'm agnostic, although I agree that 11 
is a little bit easier for me in Eastern Coast. Um, but I'm agnostic. I can go whatever. I would suggest, though, that uh, that I do like the, the pace. Uh, I would suggest that we set the next meeting to be April 8th. I'll just go ahead like that. Um, either time works for me. So that would be in UTC time, that would be four or five. Is that if 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 we stick with this time, it would be sixteen hundred UTC. Uh -huh. um, okay. If we move it back to the what we thought was the previous hour, then uh, in April, then it would be fifteen hundred. Right. My suggestion, Francesca, is mm -hmm. that rather than write it as rather than write the calendar entry as UTC, that you write it as. So it's uh, what is it? It's is it is it five p.m. Um, Central European right now? Yes. Okay, so I suggest you write it as five p as seventeen hundred CET, and then it sticks to that time. And the the times in North America is a bit st stupid. Uh, we'll just we just cope. Yeah, but that's that's what's happening now, basically. Right. But it happened uh, for one and... week in March and two weeks in October, and and the rest of the time it's we're all synchronized. Yes. So, so far. It's the case I know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So after November, a bunch of states and some provinces and stuff will stop doing daylight savings time, assuming mm -hmm. there's rationality. But that's a different problem. Yeah. So so about uh, shifting it to uh, three. PM UTC. I think that's not very convenient for Jim. Um, well, I mean, I've been dealing with that 8 AM conference call for how long now? But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but when we are going, then it's, it's going to go back to the 7 AM in no, weeks. It, or... it would go back to eight on Pacific and 11 oh, on US Eastern. It's now at right nine. Now it's nine Pacific, and this one notch in the middle. It's at nine. Yes, but we are switching also in a couple of weeks here. In so Europe. the idea is, after Europe switches, if we switch back an hour, we'll be in the same local hour for all of us that we have been for the last many months. Which is good. Okay, so basically five CET. Right. Yes. So I will note that, and uh, hopefully Wednesday is good as well. Um, okay. Move off of Wednesday. I'll yeah, never no. manage it. <laughs> Great. Um, and then that's it. So in case, in case um, we chairs are asked to plan a meeting. Uh, I will hurry up and, and try to get this time slot. Um, and um, I don't remember if we ask for one hour or one and a half hour, Jim. Do you know? Oh, for, for the big meeting? Um, I think we only had an hour. Okay. And I think next meeting, April 8th, that depending on when when we get to schedule the uh the official meeting but yeah sounds good okay should we go on with the cyber bis status please Kirsten. so we've seen that i started a working group last call of the second one uh, running for 2 weeks the idea was to have it finished by the actual meeting before we knew it was canceled. Um, so yes, I, I haven't seen any comments so far, which is reasonable <laughs> since it started only two days ago. Anything you want to talk about? Yeah, I just wanted to, to mention that um, I think we have discussed all the 
uh, pull requests except the last one, uh, which uh, you have something in the etherpad about. Let me find the etherpad again. It's gone. Where's the etherpad? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, th this uh, null versus undef uh, thing, um, I think we have uh, found something like a middle ground and we, we have agreement from the uh, submitter that this is a good middle ground. Uh, so I think we are uh, happy with that. And try to find the other one. Um, that's what you get for. Do you are you talking about the uh, 165? I'm talking about 164 request. actually. 164. So the, the, there actually is a lot of new text there, or relatively <laughs> speaking, a lot of new text. Um, and um, I think we we uh, all have to read this, this carefully, but I also think that, that we found a good middle ground for that as well. And the 165. Yeah, that, I think that, that has been closed a while ago. Um, and um, yeah, th th this is trying to find the right position on, on the spectrum of on one end uh, equating floating point and integer as just a number type like JSON does, and on the other end, accepting that most implementations don't do that. Most implementations we have today actually have very separate floating point and, and integer worlds. And Lawrence has already pointed out, for instance, for, for each, uh, we don't want to have floating point times in many cases and so on. So this, this is just another data point that, that it's a good idea to be a little bit more on the side of the spectrum that, that keeps them um, uh, separate. Um, so yeah, that's that's 165. So in, in general, I think um, th there's no no open question anymore, but of course the, the most recent pull requests re require the most attention. Lawrence, did you have time to take a look at um, yeah. 159? Uh, yeah, let me see, make sure. That's issue 159? Uh, I, I noted PR, but I don't know. Okay. I, um, yeah, just let, let me double check here, but I believe, yes. Yes, I looked at that. Yes. Okay. You're okay with, with it. Yes. yes, good. Uh, so this is done. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so you, Carsten, wanted to highlight these two um, PRs or this particular text. And anyway, we'll see what other comments come up in the next two weeks. Days until the call runs out. Yes. Okay, and then we had an action point to reach out to the implementers. 
before or during working group last call? Yeah, so they do that. that's something that, that uh, I plan to do. I didn't have time after the internet draft deadline to do anything of that, but that's on my yeah. for this week. Uh, so they will have a week to to uh, react. And mm -hmm. um, th th there are several ways of, of uh, contacting them. And uh, if, if you have other ways, if you know other implementers, uh, it, it probably doesn't hurt if you also, uh, and you as the collective working group, uh, if you also uh, talk to them so we, we can have good review from implementers as well. Okay, this covers Cyberbis, I think. Yes. So then we can talk about the time tags. Uh, Karsten, do you want to do a summary of that discussion with Mike and Jörg? Yeah, so Mike uh, uh, took the need that the driving license people um have uh for a date uh for a tag for dates calendar dates um and wrote a draft for that referencing rfc 3339 uh, which i think is is pretty much the the authoritative documents on that in in the ietf so i think that that's a good solution both uh, from the technical side uh, and from uh, the the way of writing the specification for the purposes um, of uh, having textual dates. Uh, Jörg had earlier uh, proposed a tag that would be used for both textual and numeric uh, dates, where the numeric date would be uh, an epoch-based day count. So it's using the same epoch that, that the time tag uses but it's counting days so it's a very compact uh, way to reference uh, date and uh, given that it's so compact uh, Jörg's proposal was to uh, spend a one plus one uh, tag for that while Mike's proposal currently has a one plus plus two uh, tag because texture dates are uh, longer anyway um, so I'm, I'm sorry that I completely forgot about uh, Jörg's uh, uh, input uh, there. I, I somehow lost track of that. Um, but I think uh, Jörg had a pretty good proposal there. Uh, and uh, given that we, we need to do something for the driving license people, we, I think we now have two options. Uh, one is just register the, the tag the way Mike has proposed with only the textual uh, date and uh, do something like Jörg's uh, tag separately, or we could uh, just merge the two proposals and have one tag for both uh, textual date and uh, numeric uh, date. Um, that would require a little bit of surgery on, on the uh, draft that uh, Mike has written, so we would uh, uh, try to, to copy over stuff from Jörg's uh, draft. Um, but I think we can do a registration as soon as the, the draft is stable. So we don't have to wait for a working group last call or uh, ISG approval uh, to do that. We, we are in the expert review uh, uh, part of, of the tags. Um, so I think that that would be an expedient way still a ex uh, reasonably expedient way to to uh, solve the driver license uh, problem uh, but also doing something that, that uh, gets us a permanent uh, solution to uh, Jörg's problem which would we see is not just limited to Jörg but others other people obviously have as well. So you would go with option two, merge the proposals 
Yes. So the, the, another question is whether we want to, to put in the time part and the time zone part of your proposal there as well. Um, I'm not so sure we have to, to do this all at the same time. I think it's more important to get the date tag registered and we can just register the, the time of day uh, tag uh, separately. We don't have to wait for another year to do that. We, we, we can do this right away, but we don't have to actually um, wait uh, for, for a decision whether we want to put that into the same document or not, and so on. Um, so uh, procedurally, I think we, we should do the uh, textual and numeric version of the date tag uh, as a new internet draft. Uh, then get the registration out if we agree that the draft is stable enough for that to do. And then we could add the time of day tag and the time zone uh, tag to the draft or to a separate draft. We, we can always decide uh, how, how we want to do that. Okay, any, any opinion on this? I'm a little slow here. What's the difference between Mike's draft and what's already there for tag uh, zero? Tag zero is a point in time, and uh, Mike's draft is uh, identifying a day. Not a point in time during the day, but a whole day. So in the, the RFC 3339, there is a production called full date, which is just a year, month, date. And there is another production called date time, which is built out of a full date and a time of day. And tag zero references the date time production and doesn't allow using the full date production. Doesn't allow you to, to leave off the time. I see, okay. Thank you. And um, the uh, your proposal would be for a number of days. So by my calculation, that means you could represent uh, the day up to the year 2148 in uh, two byte or three bytes. I guess four bytes with the tag. That's 65,000 days from 1970. Yeah, it's five bytes because it, it's a one plus one tag. Uh, you need um, the, the hexadecimal 19 to identify a 16-bit integer, and then you have the two bytes of the 16-bit integer. Right. Yeah, okay. So that's three bytes, right? Five. Five. <laughs> two bytes tag, three bytes integer. Okay, yeah, I see. Um, my proposal doesn't have, or doesn't have a draft right now, right? He just sent an email to the mailing list. Mike has a draft. Okay. I didn't see that. Yeah, it's... Oh, here it is. Okay, yes. Uh, yes, submitted uh, two days ago, right. And ask for time on the agenda as well. And Jörg did not have a draft, but he had some specification 
Okay. Here the specification on the web. Yes. So let me just copy paste those as well into the Etherpad. So I, I propose uh, that that uh, I work with Mike and Jörg to actually merge the date related parts of the two specifications. And uh, we have something to look at in two weeks. That sounds good to me. I think two weeks is not, not too long a delay for the driving license people. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Ira. This is an off the wall question. Mike or Lawrence you, or Jim, you probably know this, but how do these date and date time productions um, relate to, if any, the XML schema definitions for those standard data types, which are rather widely in the wild? That's a great question. We, we should look at that. That was my thought the other day, and then I ran out of time to go look. <laughs> I don't care that we're the same, but I sort of would like that we don't have it's hard to translate. <laughs> um, seems like it would be nice to have CDDL in Mike's draft or in any of these drafts. You can be sure that, that I work with the two, we will have CDDL at the end. Did, uh, Lawrence, did you see the a new version of the Freezer document? No. Uh, this has a section that shows how to put ABNF uh, into a CDDL, and it uses the the um, date time and full date productions of uh, RFC three three nine as examples. Okay. So we, we don't have that ABNF support in CDDA yet, but uh, in, in the long run, that, that's, I think, where we want to be. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, but I think, Carsten, that sounds like a good idea to uh, merge the proposals. I don't hear anybody strongly against it. Um, yeah, in the end, we just want some document that specify it well enough to to be able to register the tag. So, yeah. And we will also have it on the agenda then for, for the meeting. Yes. So, um, should we have a discussion about the agenda? I think we should submit the draft agenda today. I actually wanted to talk about it. So, um, whatever, I think whatever CBOR BIS uh, issue should be the first um, item on the agenda. Then this date tag. Um, what else? We'll be done by then. So we're at day 11 or something. Uh, it would, the working group plus call for Seaboard base will be done on Monday of the week that was supposed to be ATF, where we will right, probably not yeah, have, right. we will probably not have the meeting that week, but even if we do it. Probably not on Monday. But at least it wasn't scheduled for Monday. Okay. Uh, do we want to continue the discussion on CDDL? Well, I wrote the freezer document, the new text in the freezer document as a preparation for that. Okay. So that's what I expected. I haven't had time to look at it. 
And Jim and I, we haven't had time to submit the document, the roadmap we wanted to either. Um, but maybe, maybe now it's time to pick that up. I kind of wanted to focus all our energy on Cibor BIS and make sure that we had it done before moving forward. But now Cibor BIS is basically done. I like saying that. We it's not that. done, but... <laughs> we, know that. We, we may get all kinds of useful input in the working class call. And if, yeah. if it requires discussion yeah. time, it yeah, if priority. that happens, I will still want to focus our energy uh, our energy on Cibor BIS before we move on to uh, CDDL version 2. So it's more of, if we have time, we'll talk about CDDL. Great. Anything else? Um, so I was just going to ask, I was going to ask if, you know, what to, to what extent we we needed to have a a higher level summary of the CB, CBOR BIS issue resolutions. Um, that's why I was interested in when the working group call last ended. Um, but actually, it occurs to me now uh, to follow up on something I said yesterday at um, the IoT directorate thing. CBOR BIS uh, would make a good IEB. Um, tech plenary talk. Changes stuff we did. It probably would be a pretty short talk <laughs> because we, we didn't change anything. Uh, but uh, yes, but we did. We but we did resolve thing. a whole bunch of interesting things, right? Yes, and yes. and and we had a whole bunch of conversations about about how to do certain things. Um, and um um the the whole parser debate about values right I informs kind of a process that is i think very interesting to relate um so and the tech plenary cops don't have to be two hour long things so yeah makes sense to me Okay, I don't know what's the what would be the process to get um, that you just talk to the ISG or IAB. IAB. Probably Stephen Farrell. Okay. Yeah, if you're up for it, Karsten. Yeah, so maybe we should uh, combine this with a quick uh, state of the union on on the CBOR based security work like cozy and eat and and all that we probably cannot go into a lot of details uh, there but i think it would be a good thing to to put out a remi reminder that uh, this kind of work is happening now are, are you trying to get our attention <laughs> oh having pulled up xml schema part two data types i thought i'd just put the direct links to date time time and date in the chat and, window and then you could have them to and i put them in the of. etherpad as well so and, and, and they, they actually, wound up like six times that's all so i just wondered if you're getting frustrated oh no there's three different ones date date time time and and date and I only sent them once each. There's three different data types. Oh uh, yeah, I have, there's a bug where everything says comes up twice in the chat. Oh, Something happens. It's not doing it in mine. Oh dear. Oh, it's right. never the yet, another, yet another WebEx <clears throat> charmer. Yeah. So you were saying, Karsten, um, combine this with the work on security code C. What else did you say? see and, and in particular the eat uh work i think it, it's worth pointing out that this is happening mm -hmm. yeah yeah i agree um eat and its um, um relations in rats uh, desperately need um to get timestamps right it becomes more and more of a topic but I was talking about the plenary right now, and okay. 
for for cozy actually i think it, it also would be a good thing uh to look at what did we change going to uh, uh internet standard so jim if that is something you want to cover i think that would be useful Jim is say something up but i'm not hearing him Yeah, me neither. Maybe your mic is muted, Jim. Or maybe you need to re um, reconnect. So he can hear us at least. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yep. Uh, yeah, I keep thinking I need to write up something for for the for the the newsletter that that they that they put out too on on Cozy. Um, but yes, it would make sense to cover the the, the Cozy standardization process as well. The IEEE guy keeps asking all the chairs stuff. Yeah, that, oh yeah, I got that too. By the way, yes. Yeah, we still plan to do something for core by the end of the week. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I don't know like how this works with this meeting, um, but I can send an email to, you said, Stephen, Michael? Yeah, I think Stephen's a good place to start because he heard the conversation yesterday um okay. and um uh, i don't know who's in charge of the ieb uh technical things but he'll know and i think that's a brilliant okay. thing to include carson to include the cosi and other stuff in that i think that's really um yeah mm -hmm. okay Sounds good. Anything else? Don't hear anything. I think we covered everything I wanted to cover. For today, just check the mailing list real quick if I forgot anything. No. Um, okay, so I, I will wait before scheduling interims. Um, I will wait uh, for more uh, guidelines or indications from um, DISG. I think you should go ahead and schedule April 8th just anyway and onwards. Yeah, I mean, schedule the, uh, the interim during the week is, is the only one that we should wait on. The rest of them we should do, we should schedule immediately. Okay, just because and, in the ISG mail they said, uh, please wait with scheduling interims. But I yeah, guess because that's as, as replacement, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so we've been doing this all along. Um, you know, if, if anything, right, I would say, I don't know if anyone react to my diatribe on the, <laughs> the chairs, um, but Everybody if anything, like... yeah, everyone, but, but if anything, I think the CBOR working group is among those that could most reasonably cancel the in-person meeting because we've had so many interims and we're making things, but there's working yeah. groups where apparently the chairs have never actually interact with a remote attendee yeah i think we uh, i think these meetings these interim meetings are are very useful and uh, i just uh i'm happy with the attendance as well um it's it's a bit harder to to get people to participate of course but, but yeah i think we're we're doing a good job so 8th of April, the only thing I'm, I'm thinking if is if they want us to schedule, like if the ISG says, 
okay, uh, working group chairs, you can schedule your meeting in the next four weeks, and then um, like we will end up in a slot that, yeah, was supposed to be for the ITF meeting, not for the interim meetings. I don't work. Don't worry about it. The advantage is that if you put your thing in the calendar, that it's less likely to get stomped on by somebody else. Yeah, that's a real good point. <laughs> First mover advantage. Okay, right, right. that's all. I, I'll right? do that, and also up to Madrid. Or do we want to? Go ahead. You can cancel right. them easier than you can schedule them. Yes. <laughs> Great. I'll do that then. And anything else? Otherwise, we can close the meeting. Oh, I miss seeing you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's and very sad. I was saying before they, they canceled that is, this is going to be the first meeting that I missed since I started coming to the ATF. Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just not happening. Okay. Thank you for today. Thank you all. Bye-bye.